Europe does not equal Brussels bureaucrats because bureaucrats are really pseudo experts. And if you see the effectiveness of what happened in Brussels, it's the standard case of metastatic bureaucracy. And have you heard of metastatic diseases? You know, where you have a cell that multiplies, malignancies multiply very quickly, and then they kill the, 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 the host. In this case, they multiply at the expense. So, for example, I don't know, if they cannot guard the borders. What, why would, would you want to have a central authority to do things that cannot be done by locals, okay? They cannot guard the borders. They used to use Gaddafi, you know, to guard the border of Europe with the flow of migrants, and now they killed them, all right? So now, now they lost control of the borders. Do not do to others what you don't want them to do to you. That's the law of symmetry, okay? And, and practically every legal and religious system has been built on that symmetry. You teach someone statistics, probability, whatever it is, the kind of bullshit they teach you in business school, then send them in, to real life, guess what? They're not going to have a clue. If you do things in reverse, it's much more interesting, and nobody is going to ever be able to bullshit you. That's the whole idea. Sorry for using a Latin word in the middle of the sentence. Okay? So this is the idea, that, of, of the main idea that I've been proposing. Let me start with something, a very, very uh, contemporary topic, but the very old one, the expert problem. The problem of experts that we think are experts but are not experts, or people we don't think are experts effectively are experts. Who is the expert? Where are the experts? Let's talk about the restaurant business. A friend of mine decided to go into the restaurant business, where he, for the last 15 years, had been losing his money extremely steadily, all right? This restaurant business in New York City. And he made the following discovery that restaurants have, a, 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 like, there's a whole ecology of people who talk about restaurants. The, the two kind of people, the people like you who have a credit card. You now you have a credit card, you go to the restaurant and use your credit card. And then there are a collection of people who talk about restaurants, food critics, people like that. So there are awards. In, in the restaurant business, and like the best sushi with soft music in New York City, all right, and or the best uh, mixture Portuguese, Chinese, and Lower Manhattan, the, the, these kind of categories, all right, and then each one of them wins, you know, the best award, and there is a gala in December. Guess what? More than half the restaurants who win awards are not there to receive them; they're bankrupt. Now, what does it tell you? There's a very, very important rule we can make from this, and it's as follows. If you are judged by your peers, or are you judged by plastic? Plastic means a credit card. You know that thing you put you know, in a machine? Okay. Who's judging you? That restaurant award thing, people are being judged by food critics and other restaurateurs. So any business in which you are judged by peers, as we're going to talk a lot about bureaucrats. Once I start with bureaucrats, I can't stop. Bureaucrats are judged by bureaucrats, all right? Not by reality. Bus drivers are judged by reality, okay? If they're bad, they have an accident, they fall off a cliff. So yeah, there are two categories of people. Those who are judged by their peers, like academia, guess what? That business rots. It starts being initially very good, then you give it 10, 15, 20, 30 years, it rots to the core. Okay? So, the expert problem is as follows. This is a very famous cartoon that I think doubled my blood pressure the minute I saw it. Okay? I, got, I, went, I went into a state of rage in the New Yorker where it says, you know, there, was a, there have been some criticism of so-called so experts in, in the United States. And, they, uh, and this cartoon is about people saying, oh, yeah, no, of course, you guys are uh, uh, rioting against the experts, what they call populists, 
movement. And, uh, and look, you know, uh, oof, the, the pilot, we're going to replace him. That's not true. That is pure intellectual sophistry, and let me explain to you why. The pilot is an expert, because where are the pilots who are not experts? They are at the bottom, a French, few French people at the bottom of the Atlantic, uh, the, no, the Pacific uh, Atlantic, uh, you know, the, the, the Rio Paris uh, thing, a lot at the bottom of the Black Sea, some at the bottom near Malaysia, some near the North, North Pole, so they are dead. Bad pilots are dead, okay? Where are bad bureaucrats? They're still there, <laughs> okay? But it's very easy to judge an expert if the field has expertise, and that's what I call skin in the game. The plumber, if the plumber is not an expert, how long will it take you to figure it out? 16 seconds? <laughs> okay? So the plumber, now how do the plumber make money? At year end, they go and there's a committee of other plumbers, and then there is a senior plumber who signs off on your bonus declared by other plumbers? No. Your credit card. And basically, they're going to overcharge you. So you may complain about your plumber, okay, too nasty, too rude, too this, too this. You may complain about the expertise, maybe there's a variation in expertise between plumbers, but I don't think anyone here will will say that the field of plumbing is a field full of pseudo-experts, you agree? No, but how about economists? How about uh, psychologists? How about all these soft fields? Okay, this is the mind of an economist on a good day, all right? I'm in a clear day, I have a lot of clarity on mind, this is how they think. Why? As we're gonna see, if you're judged by reality, you have to have to be effective, you have to be, have a clear mind, you have to know what you're doing, all right? If you're judged by others, what are you gonna do? Do complicated stuff, because you're not judged by reality, the impression of others, you're gonna fool others by doing something very, very complicated. So you read papers in economics, they're very, very complicated, but then, you know, so you spend six weeks reading the paper, really, 32-page paper, very complicated, and the end realize there's nothing, right? It's all BS, but complicated. So this is what they do, and bureaucrats like to complicate things, we're gonna see, to keep their own edge going. So this is the discussion that's taking place today. It has much less to do with geography, whether England or UK is part of Europe or not part of Europe, or history, or Roman Empire, and has a lot more to do with the fact that when you put 200,000 empty suits in Brussels, you may get some people to complain about it. <laughs> right? Europe does not equal Brussels bureaucrats, because bureaucrats are really pseudo-experts. And if you see the effectiveness of what happened in Brussels, it's the standard case of metastatic bureaucracy. And have you heard of metastatic diseases? You know, where you have a cell that multiplies, malignancies multiply very quickly, and then they kill the, 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 the host. In this case, they multiply at the expense. So, for example, I don't know, if they cannot guard the borders. What, why would, would you want to have a central authority to do things that cannot be done by locals, okay? They cannot guard the borders. They used to use Gaddafi, you know, to guard the border of Europe with the flow of migrants, and now they killed them, all right? So now, now they lost control of the borders. But on the other hand, they have rules that if you have a, a farm, and you have a tractor on a farm, and the tractor has a windshield, you must have a windshield wiper. And if you have a windshield wiper, the speed of windshield wiper should be no less than 27 rounds per minute, but no more than 40. That's what they spend time regulating, all right? That's what you end up doing with bureaucrats. That's the, the case of four experts. And they judge one another, they're judged by one another. And you notice one thing about these bureaucrats, they're boring. I mean, you can see them. You can see them, you know, like, 
I, 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 I have, I'm short-sighted, but you know, I, can't, I sometimes need glasses to drive, but I don't need glasses to see a bureaucrat. I can spot one you know, very easily from not far away. So let me summarize. There's a class of people. I call them intellectual yet idiots. Because for, for a specific reason, okay, is that if there's no check on a part of reality, you will never be able to figure out if they know what they know. There's another principle I, ha I wrote in Skin in the Game, and I've written earlier about it earlier in the inserto, is that it is much easier to macro bullshit than micro bullshit. Sorry for the Latin uh, in it, but that was, you know, in the text, okay? Much easier to macro BS than micro BS. Because if you do micro BS, if you're a weather forecaster, guess what? We're going to know if you're full of baloney or not within a week, okay? But if you're predicting climate ideas and you give us all these fancy equations, nobody will ever know if, if you're not, you know, just like making up things. And effectively, they are making up things. So, so there is that principle that things only work under evolutionary pressure. We agree? That's Darwin. So the strange thing about all these academics is that they support the idea of Darwinian evolution. They support the idea. While at the same time, they don't want it to apply to them. <laughs> you see? They want to top down this, and they're against teaching intelligent design but they think they can design things from the top into, you know, in an intelligent way. So that's the idea that I try to put in Skin in the Game. For some weird reason, I developed while writing Skin in the Game, that's a parenthesis, an obsession with elephants. And I liked elephants for one particular reason. And the main reason is that an elephant, they don't take crap, they don't give crap. <laughs> you see? They don't mess with you, but don't mess with them. That's the idea. And they have a thick skin. And we're going to go to stage two, the second point about skin in the game, and try to apply to the notion of symmetry and how you transfer risk from, peop from some entity to another entity or from people, people to other people. Let's remember one thing about pilots. Pilot crashes a plane, they die. Why is it that we don't have, I mean, in the United States we have about between 20, it used to be 36,000, between 20 and 36,000 people die every year, you know, from preventable car accidents. It's high. But why isn't it much higher? Okay. Think about it. All you need is some nut to drive on a highway in the United States, or particularly in Germany, Autobahn, backwards, and you can kill in no time 30 people. Why it doesn't happen that often, or it doesn't happen? Why? Because of symmetry. Because the driver is in a car. <laughs> so the, the bad drivers have died. So the system if there is symmetry, if every bad driver is forced to be in a car that he or she are bad driving, <laughs> or <laughs> are driving badly with bad driving, then it would clean up the system from dangerous people that are dangerous for the system. Okay, so this is the idea of symmetry. Now, symmetry started with human civilization. <clears throat> it ceased to exist recently, 20 years ago, and definitely under Obama, it was lifted, okay? But exists, so 3,755 years ago, for those who could read, very few, or those who usually have people read for him, in Babylon stood this, and that's Hammurabi's law, code. And one of the things it says is that if you build a house and the house collapses and kills the owner, the architect shall be put to death. Now, it's not like they didn't like architects in, in, in Babylon, they did the beautiful structures. The point is that you cannot create risk in a system and walk away from it. You create risk, you got to eat it. 
like you got to be in that car you're driving. Because if you're creating risk, you die with it. Okay. Oh, so that was a good system to eliminate by bad architects. And it's not just a disincentive; it's a filtering. So, and of course, it has other laws that if you kill a slave of the, you know, if the house collapses, kills a slave. The the. <laughs> I think the, 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 the architect that will give you two slaves or something like that. They're like weird, weird rules. Now, civilization started with that, symmetry. Eye for eye was an extension of that. Eye for eye, you know, the biblical eye for eye. <laughs> <coughs> so, now let's see how the symmetry started disappearing in America in a financial system, okay? This is what's known as the Bob Rubin trade. Robert Rubin was a chairman, chairperson of Goldman Sachs, went to work for the government, came back, and was a vice chairperson or chairman of Citibank. Okay? Now, the trade is as follows. You make money every year. Bob Rubin got... For the 11 years he spent at Citibank, something like $120 million in compensation. Okay? Nice money, you can buy, think of the vacation you can have for $120 million. You can, nice car, nice condo, stuff like that. Okay? So think about it. Now, and then Citibank was making a little bit of money, taking risk and hiding risks. And then Citibank, you know, was insolvent. The taxpayer had to stop up the entity. Robert Rubin, they went basically to zero. Look how much money they lost. You make, you make. And Robert Rubin said, it was a black swan. After an author that I heard is very stubborn, that's what he, you know, but has a, uh, an important book. That was just what he said, literally, all right? And the stubborn part was not there, but was whatever. So that's what I call the Bob Rubin trade, is the architects knows more than anyone, more than the regulator, more than anyone, where he hid the risks. Because you cut them in a corner and they don't show. Okay? So nobody could catch, that, uh, but the, the architect knows that you cannot move from Babylon, okay, pack and leave and move to Nineveh, starts a new life there, okay, because you're going to be followed now <laughs> with all these people from Babylon, okay, making you accountable for risks you created. You cannot walk away from the risks you created. That's the principle of skin in the game. Your neck is on the line for everything you created. You cannot have profits and transfer your risk to other. Now, who are paying for Robert Rubin? Bus drivers? I think the, 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 there are characters in my book that recur Spanish uh, grammar specialists, okay, uh, ski instructors, uh, plumbers, all these people with their taxes are backing up Robert Rubin, okay. Now, this transfer of risk was rare. Remember, in the past, bankruptcy was something that some, uh, was often dealt with in criminal law. It was not commercial law, okay. So, if you cause bankruptcy, they will follow you personally. You're not shielded. So people are gaming the system okay, of limited liability by walking away from these things, okay? creating risks and letting the taxpayer back it up. So that's the transfer of risk. But this, in fact, goes deeper. So there is a symmetry. Remember the elephant? You know, we, so we have had rules. The main one the most known one is the golden rule. The golden rule is thou shall not, you shall not. Okay, you should treat others the way you want them to deal with you. Except that a good libertarian would cringe at that, lo at that rule. Why? I like squid ink pasta. I can force you to eat squid ink pasta. <laughs> Do you see? It's, no. It should be the silver rule is vastly more effective and it says... Do not do to others what you don't want them to do to you. That's a law of symmetry, okay? And, and practically every legal and religious system has been built 
on that symmetry. 